Think about the time, like right before the Wright brothers. There were like a thousand different ideas for how to make a flying machine that would hold a person up. And people were trying anything and everything. And, you know, people were dying, <laughs> you know, crashing in their own airplanes and things like that. I think that must have been a very exciting time. I kind of feel like we're at the same moment now in terms of building these small-scale flying machines. So not to hold humans up, but to hover and make a little machine that can fly around a room. Surprisingly, it's like really the last 15 years we kind of understand the basic aerodynamics involved in that. As mathematicians or physicists, we view water and air both as fluids. You can study how something flies through air by actually moving a wing in water. We're in the Applied Math Lab here at NYU where we study a lot of weird problems in fluid dynamics. This gadget here is meant to basically simulate bird flight. And what it is, is it's a uh, wing that is free to rotate. Once I flap this, the fluid forces will allow the wing to go to whatever speed it chooses to, to go at. To kind of uh, have a more compact setup, we take a forward motion and instead make it a rotary motion. So we'll have our bird swim basically in a circle in this tank. So what we'll do here is we're gonna hit this tank with a sheet of laser light. So it's gonna come across here and put little particles in the water. So this is a glass bubble. And the light will kind of bounce off the particles and allow you to see the entire flow field. And each swirl spins opposite to its neighbor and they're kind of staggered in this array. This is what we don't completely understand. Somehow that basic feature leads to the lift generated or the thrust generated. You've had these little machines crawling around on the earth, figuring out how to deal with their environment and changing environment. I guess this is a little, maybe a scientific or a engineering way of looking at animals, but they've solved a lot of hard problems. This is a wind tunnel for flapping wing flight. And the idea is you put an object in there and you flap the air up and down past it. And what we do is we fly little, what we call paper bugs, in that up and down flow. This is what I called the uh, flying jellyfish. And it's a very lightweight motor here. That's the silver thing up here. It's even got a little gearbox on there. That's the, the black thing. And there's a crankshaft. And basically, if you put a voltage on the motor, it'll spin around. So the hope would be, you know, that these wings kind of collapse in all together and shoot air out of the bottom of the critter and then kind of reinflate, squirt, reinflate, squirt. For me, it's just like all these little creative steps. You're kind of putting together a lot of components and making it work. By studying these kind of problems, you know, we could, for example, make better flying machines, not competing with the airplane, but to make a uh, small maneuverable aircraft. I kind of feel like we're at that exciting time where we could try a lot of different ideas and, um, you know, we, we just don't know which one's gonna work best. <laughs>